Weaker than expected job creation numbers in the US cast a bit of a pall over the f opening of the financial week and week this week. It seems that the US only created around 125,000 jobs for the month of March. And while this seems a reasonably large number, it fell well below analyst expectations of 200,000. On the other side of the Pacific, in China, official CPI numbers for the month of March were released. And what they showed was that the CPI had increased more than it was expected by most analysts, up around 3.6% year-on-year to March 2011. Now, in itself, the numbers aren't particularly imposing on the basis that they're still within Chinese government bounds. However, the key piece is this. Manipulation of interest rates is often used in terms of priming the pump in case of an economic slowdown. However, if inflation is relatively high, it really restricts the government's ability to do that. On the plus side of the ledger, however, oil prices were down, primarily due to the fact that Iran's going back to the negotiating table around its, its atomic program, and also that US stocks were up more than expected over the weekend. So what were the impacts of all this news on world markets? Well, in particular, in terms of Asian and US markets, the impact was very heavily felt with the markets falling, in particular the Dow falling back through the 13,000 point mark. Looking at currencies, however, the Kiwi was up against most of its major trading partners and back through 82 cents US. The weakness of the US dollar, coupled with the weakness of supply in the US market, are really shaping world beef markets at the moment. That weakness in the US dollar means that prices in Asian countries are really strongly supporting the exportation of beef from US to those markets. However, with all that export beef going out, it means that there's a shortage of supply in the US, and as we've seen, prices in the US for beef, particularly grinding beef, are at all-time highs. So what this actually means is it's changed the profile of the market for New Zealand and Australian beef exporters. Asian markets are relatively soft, however, what's happening in the US is something of a bonanza for them. Looking particularly at Australia, Australian exports to the US in terms of beef are up around 76% year on year for the quarter ended 31 March 2012. And they are experiencing though significant weakness in both the Japanese and South Korean markets. In fact, the US is now the number one export destination for Australian beef, replacing Japan. And it's the first time this has happened in three years. New Zealand is also following in that pattern with weakness in the Asian markets but a potential bonanza in terms of the US. However, we're expecting to see significant ex extra volumes of kill in New Zealand over the next few months. The question is, is whether that shortage of supply in the US will continue. New Zealand beef farmers will certainly be hoping so.